Okay, well, morning, everybody. Uh, cast time once again, and, and let me get into the music here. Um, this is going to be a Sis Purgatory album. Um, it's just the first one, the, the first acoustic sounding album that I could find. Because uh, some of the uh, some of the channels that I listen to, one of them being uh, uh, Out of Season and uh, Black Metal Promotion, they tend to put out new albums in bunches. So, and apparently, uh, Black Metal Promotion, I think there's a few other Black Metal channels that I've also subbed to, but they all like to put out albums a bunch at a time, not like one at a time, so I had to dig through a lot of that just to find uh, find something like this. So, so let me go ahead and rewind this back. Okay. And, um, and there is also going to be some moving parts in this one. So expect a few mistakes here and there. So, I mean, more functions mean more malfunctions. So, but, but otherwise, just doing my usual, uh, playing a fair amount of gems of war throughout the night. Then um, and then finally, um, I'm gonna kind of talk shop a little bit here, so this might go over people's heads, but finally. Finally got my damn car. Um, it's called Forest Troll, and um, he has an ability that doubles the amount of green gems on the board. And um, some I think some of my viewers when I stream, they've uh, they've asking me, uh, "You have Forest Troll?" I'm like, uh, "No, not yet." So, but but all I can say is it's about freaking time. So so I'm definitely making use of this guy at some point at some point in the future. Yeah, otherwise, just been doing mostly farming in that game. Um, otherwise, this was also one of my uh, Amoeba, Mu Amoeba Records nights. Just, just been watching a fair amount of that. There's a lot of, um, where it consists of mostly, uh, mostly artists I've never heard of buying music that I've never heard of. So, but, uh, one thing I did notice that a lot of these artists, they seem to have this fetish for a band named Portishead. Often singing, singing the band praises about what a wonderful album they, or what a wonderful band they are, etc. Um, so out of curiosity, I listened to their their debut album. I don't get it. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad album. I'm not, I'm most certainly not saying it's a bad band. I mean. I would gladly listen to Portishead than something like Smash Mouth or or Whitney Houston. Like screw that. So, but I mean, aside from that, though, it I don't get the appeal. And to me, it's, uh, it they kind of sound like if if Beck was a woman. Um. If uh if Bjork was an American. But it, it sounds it it sounds very 90s. It, it like trademark 90s. It, I mean it was it, I mean the the debut album that I listened to I think it did come out in the 90s. But I mean it just I think if you heard it and you grew up in the 90s you would definitely say wow this is a night wow this is 90s music. So. I think I might have to turn that down a little bit. Okay, so... But yeah, it, it's... It was, but they were like... They were, it was, those are pretty much my first impressions. Maybe if, uh... Maybe... If Kate Bush's backing band had another singer, I, I, again, it, I'm just, I'm just tossing some equivalents out there. And, you know, I mean, but uh, you know, but I mean, I, I guess it's also kind of like um, now that I think about it, it's like the uh, pinball, it's like the pinball table, the Adams family, the greatest selling pinball table of all time. I don't get the appeal. 
but it seems like millions of other people apparently do. You know, they praise that table to the high heavens. Uh, oh, what a wonderful table. I think um, Twilight Zone's kind of like that too. And again, I don't, I don't really understand the appeal of that table. I mean, to me, t the table's just a clusterfuck. But on the, I mean, it's, it's the Twilight Zone, so, you know, do 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 You know, so it's got to have that kind of, kind of wonky layout. You know, so. But, you know, on, on the other hand, though, I'm pretty sure that, um, uh, you know, if I, if I mention that, um, uh, that, uh, Dungeon Synth, I, I don't know the name of the, I don't know the name of the band. I just know the name of the album is like. Dionysus, but it, it's it's Greek. It's a Greek album, but it's my favorite Dungeon Synth album. Hell, even even mentioning Dungeon Synth, most I mean, Portishead fans would probably would probably uh, hear that and they'd be like, "Huh? I never even heard of that." You know, even throw you know, then throw Dionysus on. I'm pretty sure it's like, "What is this? Do they record this in a basement or something?" Which my answer would be probably, um, yeah, a guy, yeah, a guy on a flute and uh, and a, you know, a guy on a flute and a synthesizer. Oh, okay, you know that kind of thing, or you know, even you know, or even throwing on some like, like old Commodore 64, or as I like to call it, Dungeons and Dragons synth. It's like music that's actually meant for uh, tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. You know, throw this stuff on. Oh, this music's kind of cute. Oh, it sounds so retro. Oh, wow, you play this for Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, so I'm pretty sure I'd probably get that kind of reaction from them. Short answer, I don't get this music. So, or hell, you know, or hell, even throwing on a, ba a band like Primus. You know, like Primus's Pork Soda album or Sailing the Seas of Cheese or, you know, something like that. You throw something like this on it. Oh man, this music's kind of silly. Sounds like these guys are just fucking around, despite the fact that in my mind, <clears throat> especially the bass player, Les Claypool, the guy's a freaking genius. You know, it, but again, it, you know, like, you know, same planet, different worlds. You know, I, I guess I guess um that can translate over to pinball too. You know, I'm pretty. You know, I can probably. You know, I mentioned a table like. Hey, I'm 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 sorry if you guys have never heard of these pinball tables, but pinball has been my life in some form ever since I was a little kid. So you know, but even even if I mention a table like, oh, like Central Park, or El Dorado. You know, a lot, most other people probably wouldn't get the appeal of these tables, despite the fact that they're, they're some of my favorites. You know, my all-time favorite table, TX Sector. You know, I'm pretty sure, uh, those big fans of Adam's family would probably check out a table like this, and they'd be like, Oh, wow. I don't get it. Must be a novelty table. So... You know, again, I mean... Same planet, different worlds. So. Um. I guess, uh. But yeah, I tried to. Uh, oh, there was something else I was wanting to say, too. I totally forgot. And I've got a small feeling I might be adding the poorly prepared tag to my, uh my video title yeah because I I basically did this video and I basically did this in a hurry oh that, that's what it was yes I totally forget I'm totally going off the cuff on this so no preparation on this um, I did try finding more uh, video clips to add to my stream yeah, but um it it just wasn't happening. Um, the I think uh, one of my uh, one of the characters on my team, on my main team, she's called Egg Thief. She, you know, she steals eggs. I thought it'd be funny as hell to have a 
the Amanda Show girls room clip, the girl on there, hi, I like eggs. I thought it'd be kind of funny to have that little video clip right there every time I beat somebody in PvP. Every time the 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 um, egg thief chip comes out, you didn't need it anyway. Have hi, I like eggs, but they I couldn't find I couldn't find a clip. It looked to me like what I'd end up having to do is end up having to buy like probably like every single one of every single season of the Amanda Show, which. I have no desire to do, but if I did, that means I'd have to sit here and go through every single one of those episodes to find just the right clip, just the, just the right moment, use my video editor to, to cut and trim that very moment, and then, you know, add it to my OBS, and then play that at the right time. I also wanted a, there was a, oh, there, oh god, there was a, one of the most beautiful for lack of a better word, um, moments, there was like a, um, there was like a, a Ravens versus Patriots game, the ref made a bad call, the entire stadium just, ball shit, boom, boom, ball shit, boom, boom, ball shit, boom, boom, I would, I was, I really would have loved to have added that to my stream, you know, like, whenever, whenever, like, I'm beating my opponent and I got him down to like one character, all of a sudden RNG just suddenly favors her. And actually that did happen yet that did happen on stream last night. One care I had the other team down to one character. One character left. She was on her last legs. All of a sudden she was getting all these gem drops and took out my entire fucking team with that one with just that one character. She came from, you know, like the the uber comeback i wouldn't even call it a comeback it just aren't you know it was like all of a sudden compute cpu assistance suddenly got turned on and she came back and wiped out my whole team just like that i would have loved to have this little video clip the bullshit boom, boom, bullshit but the problem is for this particular one it kept up uh, the camera kept focusing on the refs focusing on the football field I wanted the camera to focus on the crowd itself chatting this. But alas, it wasn't there. It just wasn't there. I tried looking for other bullshit chants, and they were they were in the crowd footage. You couldn't in and the few times I actually did find find something suitable, the <laughs> part of it wasn't there. All you heard was oh shit. Bullshit. So that and that was it. So, but yeah, I I totally forgot forgot to forgot to add a few bullet points of this. And yes, and and kind of I'm kind of addressing those that are that are just now checking out my cast. Um, I don't use a script. I don't write down exactly what I'm gonna say. But what I will do is I'll jot down some bullet points here and there. Just, you know, little little reminders and stuff. Um, and some of which I have actually added into my OBS program. So, you know, you'll write, you know, when you're writing the uh, subcategory descriptions, I'll jot down the notes in there. So, but yeah, like, but this, this subject here, I just totally slipped my mind. But it is something I'm working on, though. Trying to look for little, little ways of little ways of improving my stream. I found it through, you know, one of the ways I found it was through my soundboard. Executed with impunity. You know. You know, and so on and so forth. So that's one of the ways I found to improve my stream. Um, and you know, another way was Looking for little video clips and adding them to adding them to my stream, so stuff like that. But I, for the most part, came up empty. So. Oh, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. Um, I'm, before I close this out, uh, one thing I do also want to say is, uh. I don't, 
This is still this is an idea that I just started kicking around. I'm not a fan of it. And it might actually take a lot of work on my part, or it might take uh, extra work. But what I'm thinking of doing is uh, instead of just playing a YouTube video as I'm talking, I'm thinking of just doing just a talking only. Just you know, like laying down the the vocal track, for lack of a better phrase. You'll just have me talking, record that, and then just uh, record uh, and just record a YouTube video or record music underneath that. Having two separate tracks, having you know, having my having the me track and the music track. You know, saving them as two separate entities. This way, if uh, if YouTube uh, copyright claims one of my videos because of copyright and music, I could just go ahead and. You know, switch that music out and replace it with another. So, but the big problem with that is, is one, it's basically going to be double work. Because again, I have to do, I have to talk, I have to do the talking part of the video. And then I have to record, I have to record a YouTube music video underneath that. So it's double work. And if my video does get copyright claimed, then I'm going to have to erase that music and replace it with something else until I find something that doesn't doesn't trip the YouTube content ID bot. And that is something else I, I keep forgetting to mention too. Um, for those that don't know about uh, copyright claiming, it's um it's being done by a bot. Um, with the exception of one, maybe two exceptions, all the time, all the other times that my videos get copyright claimed, it's done by a bot. It's not done by an actual person. So, kind of the same way that, uh, the way Twitch, Twitch censors their, uh, content. They use a bot as well. So, it's just, uh, YouTube's bot is a lot more stringent than Twitch's. So, but yeah, it, so it's also one of the reasons why it's one of the reasons why I don't want to I don't want to appeal these. One, it's not worth it cuz you're you're not appealing to YouTube. Or I mean, first and foremost, I'm for basically I'm knowingly using copyrighted content. So, part of, it basically is my fault. But I don't have you know, I don't have shit for options at least up until recently. So, I mean, I I could probably go into a whole ordeal about copyright but I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. But I, it's just something I want to get out there that I keep forgetting to do on all my other videos. That the the it, my YouTube's copyright claiming is mostly done by a bot. Only one instance that I could think of, it was a copyright claim by an actual person. Uh, for what it's worth, it was a channel called the Gohan Dogs and Cats. Uh, yeah, he copy cla copyright claimed my video because I had. I had cats eating fucking fish. Yeah, cats eating fish, and I got dinged for that. So, I mean, at that point, I might as well just, I might as well just start playing Cardi B's wet ass pussy in the background. But again, I'm kind of digressing here. So, but yeah. Otherwise, I've said all the things that I wanted to say. So I'll just stop here. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um. I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning, which will be my last one for the week because that's when my work week starts up. So, But until then, though, everybody, thanks for coming around, everyone, and see you all next time. Bye for now.